Welcome as we continue our lessons on spiritual practices. As we begin, let's remember to light our candle because it reminds us that we are one in Christ, bound by faith, hope, and love. Last week, we talked about the spiritual practice of worship. We learned that worship doesn't just happen in the sanctuary at church even though that's a very important place. But it can also happen anytime and anywhere, and it often happens at unexpected times and places. Worship happens when we give thanks to God and show His love to others. This week, we're going to learn about unplugging. I wonder what that means. How is unplugging a spiritual practice? You may think of unplugging in the form of unplugging the television or unplugging from a tablet or a computer. And yes, that's true, but it's also so much more. I wonder if you have ever played the game Freeze Tag. If you haven't, it's where one or maybe two people are it. They're the taggers, and everyone else spreads around the room and tries not to get caught by the taggers. The goal for the taggers is that everyone in the room is frozen and there's no one running around. The people who are the taggers simply touch those who are running around and that person has to freeze right where they are. Typically, they can only be unfrozen or start running around again when someone else who is not a tagger comes and tags them to set them free. So if you've played this game, I wonder what it feels like to be frozen. I wonder if you became restless and began begging a friend to come and set you free. I wonder what it was like to be still and watch others running and playing while you waited. Sometimes we need a little touch or a nudge, which is like being tagged, to stop what we are doing and to simply be still. When Jesus lived on earth, he traveled to many places. Once, he healed a man with a skin disease who could not get well on his own. Soon, the news of what he had done spread so quickly that large crowds began to gather and follow, follow him. In Luke 5, verses 15 and 16, it tells us this. But now more than ever, the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. But he with, would withdraw to deserted places and pray. At times, Jesus had to say no to the things he was doing so that he could rest, so that he could be still. He would retreat to the desert, the wilderness, or even out into the sea with his disciples to be still and rest. This gave him a chance to recharge and to be ready to say yes to the next thing. Unplugging means simply to step back away from activity, away from sounds, and yes, even away from screens, to pause and to rest so that we can better connect with God Sometimes these opportunities come 
for us to do this naturally. But often, we must be intentional. We must do this on purpose. We must take the time and the space to unplug. Last week, we talked about the book of Psalm. In many of the Psalms, you may notice a word that is still there in the Hebrew language. The word is Selah. Selah means simply to pause. I wonder why you think this word is in the Psalms. I wonder why pausing is so important. Spiritual practices like unplugging help us to pause and reflect so that we can make space to come close to God and for God to come close to us. In the New Testament, we read about a missionary named Paul. He traveled around telling others about Jesus and spreading the good news. He also wrote letters to some of the churches. In the book of Colossians, chapter 2, verses 2 and 3, he writes this, I want their hearts to be encouraged and united in love so that they may have all the riches of assured understanding and have the knowledge of God's mystery, that is, Christ himself, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. When we take time to pause and rest and allow God to come close to us, and we can come close to him, then we are taking time to wonder about the mysteries of God. We are taking time to reflect on what we have learned from our parents and our teachers at church about God as we study the scriptures, the words of the Bible. This knowledge helps us to follow God wherever he may lead us. So when are some times that you think you could use a pause? When perhaps you are trying to make an important decision? Or what about when a friend hurts your feelings? Maybe even when you are scared or anxious, anxious about doing something new. It could even be when you see something that brings you joy or that reminds you of God's Word. These are all moments that would be good times to pause. Each of you all the school-age kids of Emmanuel should have received an envelope. Inside the envelope is included a bracelet like this with the words Sila on it. There's also an art page with this word. These are things you can use to remind yourself to pause. Wear your bracelet so that when you need to pause, the word Sila will remind you. You can decorate the page, the art page with the word Sila, and place it in your family's sacred space, or on a bulletin board, or on a refrigerator, where everyone can see it as a reminder to pause for a moment as well. As a family, I wonder what would happen if we took a few moments to pause each day, to reflect and to recharge. Would it help us to be ready for the next thing? 
Would it give us more energy and more focus as we have had time to come close to God and God has come close to us? Try to unplug this week. Try to pause when you need it. Be intentional every day. Today, let's pause for a moment and say a prayer together as we depart. Dear Father, thank you for all the people you use each day to teach us about your love. Help us to remember all that we have been taught when we pause and reflect throughout our days. We ask that you watch over our friends and family as they make big decisions. Be with us this day and throughout the week. Blessings and peace to you. Amen.